Right, this is a quick video on why you should have three FTP numbers or why you might have different FTP numbers depending on when you're training, where you're training, and what bike you're on. So this is just for like a typical road cyclist. Maybe if you do other disciplines, you might have even more. But anyway, so number one, number one, flat outside TT. So this would be like sort of if you have a TT bike, you'd be on the time trial bike, or you know, let's say you're in an aggressive road position. Um, so this would be you know. A typical number let's say because most people if you're going to test a 20 minute power most people don't have a 20 minute climb i would guess so if you can do a 20 minute test let's say you do this but this then you might do climbs maybe you have shorter climbs you'll see oh i can do way more power on a climb like why is this and i'm gonna get into that in a minute but you then might go somewhere hilly and then find out actually i can do like my 20 minute power is way higher um but then if you try to do that use that ftp on the flat you just couldn't do it so that's why you potentially would have different numbers. Um, but we'll go into this a little bit more in detail. And then obviously, if you're riding inside on a turbo trainer, there are a lot of reasons why your FTP probably won't be as high. But all of this, you can have one FTP if you train it consistently. But in general, there will be slight differences. Um, but obviously, you have different bikes, like a TT bike, road bike, it's very hard. Um, but if you have one road bike, it is easier to make sure the numbers do correlate better. So we'll, we'll go for the flat one. So let's say you're in your time trial bike. Here it is, a nice Ribble TT bike. Um, and at 45 kilometers an hour, your energy is going to be 5.55 kilojoules. So that's, you know, at a mass of, I said, 70 kilos. So that's me at sort of 60, 61 with a TT bike. Probably a little bit low. Probably would be slightly heavier. And the velocity at 45 kilometers an hour. So obviously that doesn't really mean that much to anyone. Everyone's like, well, okay, fair enough. But what I'm trying to say is that the energy here is quite a lot. So what it means is, well, obviously, when you're traveling fast, you, you'll be able to recognize this, especially when you have a power meter, is that you, this is from an article from Sagging Tips where I got a lot of this information, which I'll link below, and I've got some excerpts from it. But you, when you're pedaling at 45 kilometers an hour, you have a lot of momentum. So each pedal stroke doesn't really add much to the actual uh, speed of the bike. It's not like, so if you stop coasting, you'd have a lot of energy. You have 5.55 kilojoules. So the resistive forces of aerodynamics and rolling resistance and I guess drive training, but if you're not pedaling, that wouldn't really count, aren't going to slow you down much. Um, so when you're pedaling, you generally use more fast switch fibers, you produce more power over shorter phase um, when you're traveling at higher speed. Add to that in the TT position, you're in an extreme position, your hip angle is going to be tighter, etc. etc. So that's you know, this is more just imagining even if you're riding in the same position, but obviously with a TT bike. You'd want to have a different, you're going to have different numbers, even if you're riding up a hill, because you're in a different position. But then if we compare this to a climb, so let's say here's my nice Cervelo um, on a slope. Let's say this slope is 6%, and let's say, you, you know, you, you're going decent speed. You're going 20 kilometers an hour. Suddenly your energy is a fifth. It's one kilojoule. So I've assumed you have a lighter bike. So my bike's like 7 kilos, so 68 kilos, velocity 20 kilometers an hour. You have one kilojoule of energy. So you're going to slow down so much quicker. Like a lot lot quicker and so each pedal stroke means that it has way more of an effect on the bike like think when you ride up a 20 like a 20 percent gradient and you're pedaling really like you know cadence is 60 you can literally feel you pushing the bike up and that force is really really different even for the same cadence and that's the thing that sort of blows people's mind that like but surely if you just have a, the same cadence but it's not because when you pedal like 110 cadence on a climb it is different because you push through a longer duration, like you apply power through a longer duration. Um, so that is basically why you'd want to have a different FTP because in general, people find it easier when there's more resistance um, to push all the way through so they can generate more power. But this can be corrected. I found myself that my power on the flat compared to the climb is getting better. And, it, and sometimes if I just train on the flat, my power on the flat will be better than the climb. So I think genetically, I don't think there's any disposition for each one maybe there is in my opinion it's more that because most people generally when they start cycling don't know how to go as hard on the flat until they get power meter they'll go harder on the climb so they get better at that they do most of their intervals on the climbs okay maybe not 20 minute intervals but you know like six minute intervals eight minute intervals most people have climbs around that length so that is why that people generally can put more power on the on the climbs and also it generally physiologically is easier but having said that i've managed to do intervals on the flat and the climbs at the same power for me. Um, I can't do it in an aggressive position though. So like you'll see me riding like th threshold, but like in a completely upright position because I want to get the physiological adaptations. But obviously 
you know, it'll be a lot more efficient. I need to get used to riding in a way more aggressive position, doing the same power. But um, yeah, so that's why you want to have a different one. But just for the inside outside, I'd say you want to have a different one because there's no point setting your FTP on a climb and doing it on the flat and just not being able to do it because you're like, well, this is a complete waste of time. Um, so it's better to sort of know, oh, okay, I'm on my TT bike today, 10% lower. And like when you're when I'm doing like a TT, I know my best 20 minute power for a road bike on a climb is 350. But on an, on like a road on a TT, 320 is like sort of my max. And obviously that's a huge difference. You know, that's 30 watts, almost 10%. Um, but that will change and you'll see this year when I start training more on my TT bike. Obviously my FTP is horrendous at the moment because I'm ridden a bike for like three months um because of my injury. But like obviously you'll see that my FTP will be a lot closer because I'm gonna ride my TT bike more um and get used to it and I've changed my position slightly. So then we'll go into the last one which is okay so then we'll get we'll so this is the article it's from I'll link it below. Basically what I said before you're using more anaerobic systems you're using slow twitch my fibers they're firing very quickly this is basically why so and then if we look at this obviously pause it if you want to read it in more detail um but you need to contract a higher kinetic situation and a lower and you recruit more fast twitch fibers even though you may be at the exact same cadence and power as when you're climbing and that's the thing but obviously like you'd say oh well surely then springs is a really good at time trialing i mean muscle kittle one junior world champs but i don't think it's to do with that i think it's more i think you know, obviously you're going to use different muscle fibers, but obviously you still need your low, your slow twitch muscle fibers. But uh, there hasn't been much studies into this, unfortunately. Uh, but you can basically see what I've been trying to explain, but more succinctly. So why would you want one for indoors? Um, well, you'd want one for indoors, basically, um, because the heating situation is quite an issue for a lot of people. Um, so... For most people, they can't actually cool themselves a lot. I remember in the UK, when do I actually sweat properly? Like, a proper, have a proper sweat outside, like, maybe 10 days a year. And on the tra turbo trainer, every single time you're on the turbo trainer, you sweat. And that's just obviously different. It doesn't matter how many fans you have. You are going to sweat when you ride inside. Um, well, in the UK, I, like, when it's 15 degrees, 20 degrees, you just don't really sweat very much. And that's get absolutely full. Um, so that's a big difference. And people aren't used to that. I'd say that's one of the biggest things. The second one is motivation. It's a lot harder to motivate yourself. I find at least maybe other people don't um, inside in comparison to outside. When you're probably pushing on a climb, you get the sensory feedback of like, I'm actually flying like, wow, I'm really going hard on this climb. Like it's a nice sensation. And when you're like, you know, setting your best 20 minute power, let's say on a climb, you're like, I'm going 6% grading. I'm going like 25k out. I'm flying up this or whatever. Like you get that sort of mo in internal motivation. At least I do. Or even on like your TT bike, you're just flying along at 50 k's an hour or whatever it's like pretty nice feeling well it feels exactly the same on an indoor training if you're going at 300 watts or 400 watts i mean it just hurts more but like you know you don't feel like you're going fast or anything so i find the motivation um and the last of the thing is the flywheel it's a similar thing i have like a dumb turbo train and no flywheel or anything it feels like you're pedaling through mud really horrible and because the resistance is the whole way around the top of the pedal straight where normally you get rest, you don't get a rest, um, which isn't ideal. But the newer ones, like the bit, because you have a bigger flywheel, you don't have that. Um, you don't have that sort of sensation of pedaling up a 20% grading the whole time. However, again, I've hit some very good numbers. When I only, when I would, like, was living in London full time and did 20 minute tests just on my turbo trainer, then, you know, like I hit, I kept on improving and like it was fine. Um, because I re rode like at school, I would just ride with my turbo trainer um, every night and you just get used to it. I mean, it's still a horrible, I, I hate the turbo trainer and that's why I don't ride it because I rode it too much for like two years and pretty much all my time apart from the weekend was on the turbo trainer. Um, but yeah, you can improve a lot. It helps you to improve. I rate the turbo trainer, um, but for me, I just don't have the motivation. I like riding outside more. So if I have the time, I always will. But for sure, the, the indoor training is, it's hard to get your FTP to be the same. Uh, but it will happen and it's also very good to practice your position for the tt bike because you can really focus on that and nothing else because obviously you don't have to negotiate a general road so anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy if you've got any more questions let me know about different ftps um next one i'm going to do is going to be about i saw i made a similar video about ramp test versus eight minute test but i want to prove that the eight minute test is accurate and um why fast fitness tips are just fake news when it comes to ftp numbers um I might do a breakdown of debunking them because I really like to see that stuff and it triggers me immensely.
and it also has a lot to do with this video as well. So anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.